All right, so we wanna actually be able to work with Google Cloud's services. There's a lot of services on there that make it really easy to make our applications that much better. So I'm gonna be going through this blog post right here. It's one that I created specifically so we can get this set up and doing so in a way that maybe you've never done this before, or even if you have, this is just sort of a uniform way that we can all do it to make sure that Google Cloud is working on our local system. So go ahead and check out that blog post. And if you want extra context, by all means, watch the rest of the video. If you don't, then go ahead and go to that blog post and just go through it. Um, so I'm gonna assume that you have a Google account. So if you go to cloud.google.com and try and sign in, um, you are gonna need a Google account of some kind. So if you have a Gmail account, you have a Google account. So once you log in there, you'll be in the console. It's gonna look something like this. As of now, there's a free $300 credit to using all of Google Cloud's products for every Gmail account, right? I literally just made this account and I got a free $300 credit for it, which is really cool. I really appreciate that Google is allowing us to do that. Uh, so I'm actually not gonna be going th through the uh, console too much here, uh, but I do have a project already set up, which is something that I will have to do in the blog post as well. So now what I'm gonna do is actually download the G Cloud SDK package. So I already have it linked. Of course, you can just do a Google search for this as well, G Cloud SDK installation package, uh, and you'll find these instructions. Now, first and foremost, whatever system that you're on, you're gonna to wanna to know whether or not it's 64-bit or 32-bit. I would argue the vast majority of modern systems are 64-bit. So the operating system that you have that's what it is that you wanna look for because it is actually important for actually installing G Cloud. Um, so here's a couple of ways on how you can actually find out what the bit operating system you have. Um, but like I said, it's a really good chance that it's gonna be 64 bit. Now the process for all three platforms is exactly the same. We download the file or the package, we unpackage it, and then we want run the install script that comes inside of that package. Now, Mac and Linux users use the exact same command. Windows users use a different command. All of those commands are on that blog post. So if we actually go in here, we'll see the command right here. So tar XOPF, and then the name will actually unpack it for Mac and Linux users. And then Windows users, it's expand archive, and then the name of the zip file, and then a period there. So those are built-in methods for unpacking. You can use other methods if you like, uh, but of course I'm gonna go ahead and use the command line to do this. So before I even jump there, I wanna make sure I download the version of the Google Cloud SDK that you know fits with my actual system, which is Mac OS in this case. So I download that one, and, and now I'm gonna go ahead and open up terminal, open up a new terminal window. I'm gonna CD into my downloads, and I'll see this you know, tar here. So now I'm gonna move this file here. So MV for move, grab the file name and the destination. In my case, it's tilde slash. This should work on Windows and Mac and Linux all the same. And it'll bring it into my root user. So CD in back or simply CD into tilde slash. And I list things out there. I now see that I have this packaged, you know, file here. Uh, so what I wanna do is use tar and XOPF and then the name of this package and then hit enter. And this is going to have it unpack it right into that user's folder. So if I list things out, I'll see this Google Cloud SDK here. So next I just need to remove this file. So remove that file. And then, you know, Windows users, looking back at that guide, um, it's almost identical to that except you are just gonna go ahead and run expand archive, and then you'll remove it, and then you'll run this script instead of, if we go into Google Cloud SDK, we're gonna go ahead and do dot slash install.sh. This is going to install the Google Cloud SDK on my entire system so that I can, for this particular user, so that I can simply write gcloud on any directory and it'll run. Uh, so it gives me a shortcut to it. Um, and I, I'm going to go ahead and say no on the improving the SDK. You can do whatever you'd like. And I'm going to go ahead and add this into my path. So it's going to update my Z shell, which we'll see in just a moment. So it updates this. 
Now, Windows users, you're not going to necessarily see it exactly like this, but the first two things um, most likely did show up for you as well. Even if it didn't in that order, that's okay. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and leave it in the default RC file. Um, and there we go. So now we should have Google Cloud installed. Now, it does say start a new shell for the changes to take effect. So that just means open up a new terminal or a new PowerShell window. And Windows users, you might have to run this part as a actual super user or admin that is so you're going to go ahead and do g cloud and components update so this is something you'll want to run on a regular basis g cloud will warn you when you should run it too so that's really nice so with that i actually do have google cloud installed it is ready to go for the most part but the next thing i actually need to do is actually log in to this system so i'll go ahead and do g cloud auth log in okay so this actually opens up a web browser for me and then we want to actually log in to the account that we're going to be using right so this is the same exact account that i just showed you with the console uh, you just need to approve that the google cloud sdk has access to this account right so it's just giving us the ability to do the things that we need to do once we do that we're now authenticated um, so we should be able to actually configure our local setup with the next part, which is G Cloud, as it it even tells you right here, right? So it says you're logged in and now you can actually, you know, set your project ID just like this. So how do we actually get that project ID? Well, we actually go back into the console and I already have a project here, but if you don't, it'll say start a new project or select a project. Um, and all you can just do here is say new project and then you can actually create a brand new project. In my case, I'm not. I'm going to stick with the CFE project because after you create any project or all of your projects, you'll see the ID right here. So I go ahead and select that. And then it's just G Cloud config set project. And there you go. So you can add additional projects to this or change your project at any time. It's just, it's really up to you uh, as far as how all of that goes. But now we have G Cloud installed and working so I can call this gcout command anywhere on my system, uh, which is really, really nice. And so with this, we will be able to do all the things we need to do inside of gcloud.